everybody, welcome to Coding with Chandler. Today I'll be giving a brief tutorial on how to quickly get GitHub Actions set up in an existing project. GitHub Actions are finally here and I'm super excited to show you all how to integrate these actions into your project. I recently set up GitHub Actions for a project at work and was shocked at how quick and easy it was to set up and I thought that I'd share it with you guys. So, if you have a process that you would like to automate every push or pull request to your project, then GitHub Actions might be an important tool to consider. What I love about GitHub Actions is that it removes the need for a third-party app like CircleCI or Jenkins to automate the building and testing of your app. Instead, you can go straight to the source and configure this process in your GitHub repository. Before I get into this, there are some prerequisites. So for one, you're going to need to know Git. And then secondly, you're going to need to have a repository posted to GitHub. If you don't, then you can't use GitHub Actions. Once you have a GitHub repository posted up, come back to this video and we can go through the steps on how to set up GitHub Actions. If you don't know how to push to a repository or set one up, uh, I will link a tutorial in the description below so you can get some information on how that works. First step is to go to your GitHub repository and as you can see, I have this repo set up called GitHub Actions Example where I'll be going through how to set that up. There's absolutely nothing special about this repository at all. It is just simply a basic node application with tests that can run. So I have about one command configured in my package.json called test where it'll run some basic Mocha tests. And I'll be setting up a GitHub workflow to run that every time I push to developer master or if I make a pull request to it. I'm not gonna go into the nitty gritty details on how GitHub actions work or how to configure certain things. I will just only show you guys how to add it to your project and run some basic tests. So the first thing we're gonna see is this name field here, and this is where we configure the name of the whole workflow. For now, we can just call it GitHub Actions Example. Next, we have this on field, and this is where we're gonna set up our, what I like to call workflow triggers. Pretty much what we put in this field determines what will trigger the workflow to run. And right here, we're saying on line three, on every push to this repository, run this entire workflow. That's pretty much what it's saying. But I'm sure I and most people who are setting up GitHub Actions don't want a GitHub workflow to run every single push. Um, you, can figure, you can configure things like on every pull request or on every push to a certain branch. And that's what I'm gonna show you guys how to do. So instead of running this workflow on every push, we would want it on every pull request and every push. And I should have mentioned this varies by um, project. Some people wouldn't want that. It just depends on what you're looking for. But I'm setting this up to run this workflow, every pull request and push to the branches, master or develop. So if you want to set up a GitHub action to only run when we open a pull request to a certain branch or when we push to a certain branch, you would set it up something like this. We're basically saying, hey, on every pull request and on every push to the following branches, run this workflow. Next, we're going to move on to the jobs section of this configuration file. And this is where you would configure your build process if you want that to run or where you would run your tests. Personally, since it's a small project that doesn't really do anything, there's really nothing to build, but I have some tests that I want to run, so I'm going to rename this to test. We want these tests to run on Ubuntu Latest. If you have a preferred container you'd like to run your tests on um, or deploy on, you can go to the GitHub Actions documentation to see the options that you have available for that. But I'm just going to leave this as is. I'm not entirely sure what this is for, so I'm going to remove it. If you see anything that you don't need that, uh, that is required for your test to run or your deployment to run, um, I'd recommend removing it because the default uh, GitHub file that they give you um, may not include all the things that you need. One thing you're going to want to make sure you do is give each job a name. So we have this name field that comes with each job and we can give it any name we would like. I'm personally just going to call this running unit tests. And as each job runs, it will display the name so that we can see what process is running. Next are these steps, and pretty much what's happening here is, I don't freaking know, but I know that this is needed for GitHub Actions to work. So that's something that you're going to want to keep in your file. Anything following that is the things that you would want to configure on your own. So on this example, we see name, npm, install, build, and test. So this is where it's running the install, build, and test process, and this is those commands that are running. If you want, you can separate each of these processes so it's a lot more clear. For example, I can remove all this and just say name npm install. And then I can have it run only npm install. 
I'm personally going to name this something that makes a lot more sense and that's more readable to people. I will just call this install. Next step I want to run is testing. Um, so I will make another task called test and we will run npm test. Now we have this, this env field and this is where you would configure environment variables that are needed for your process to run. However, um, I personally don't have any environment variables like I mentioned. This is a basic node project that just runs some basic Mocha tests. So we don't need this field here. So let's go over everything we did. At the top we set the name, then we're saying hey on every pull request or push to the branches master or develop we want to run this workflow. So let's go over this file one more time before we wrap this up. At the top of the file we configure the name of our workflow and then we determined what triggers our workflows um, in this on field here. And we're saying on every pull request or push to the branches master and develop run the rest of the workflow. Within the workflow we've configured a job called test and these are the necessary commands to run the tests. We have what is necessary for GitHub to even run the workflows and then we also have npm install running which is needed for the test to run and then we have npm test running which will actually run those tests. When you're done setting up your workflow file you're going to want to commit this file. Um, before I commit this I'm going to quickly change the name of my config file um, I'm going to call it github actions.yaml. You can name this anything that you would like, but personally I feel like that makes the most sense. Um, and then I'm just going to go ahead and commit this to my project. Once that is committed, ideally that should kick off the github actions. If you take a look at the commit, you'll see a yellow dot, and that is pretty much saying, hey, we have a process that's running right now. If the process is passed, then it'll turn into a green check mark. To see your workflow and see how everything's running, you're going to want to go to this Actions tab, and here we see our GitHub Actions example process running. For those of you who have used CircleCI, it is kind of similar. All you got to do is click on the job and then you can see the details of what's going on. So as you can see, my install is running right now, and I should be able to click into this to see the logs. And as you can see, we see all of my tests have ran and have passed. And then I see some details and some logs on my install. And it looks like everything worked as expected. If everything passed, you should see a green check mark here, and you could always go back to the commit itself and see that it passed with that green check mark there as well. But that is my brief tutorial on how to set up GitHub Actions. I hope it was as simple as possible. I do want to mention is that I did try setting up GitHub Actions locally and that created some issues. GitHub for, uh, for some reason wasn't able to pick up my workflow file, um, but I noticed I won't experience any issues if I do it directly in GitHub's uh, GUI. But that is all I have for today. If you have any questions, feel free to comment them down below and I'll try my best to get back to you. I hope I made setting up GitHub Actions as easy as possible.